Sports is Jess Burton, and just before you go over our annual Thanksgiving football preview, we have some tournament scores to announce. That's right, John, and I'm getting better at predicting those scores just by a little bit, uh, but let's get right to it today with the cross-country team. The cross-country team won for the second straight year the Division IV Eastern Mass Championship, and they beat 23 other teams and placed four runners in the top 10, including A.J. Ernst. He placed first in what he said was, quote, the toughest race he's ever run due to the wind in which I predicted the win, not the wind. Let's just be, that, be clear here. Others in the top 10 included Jared Kokonos in fifth place, Michael Weidenbrook in sixth, and Adam Linsky in 10th. And the boys will run in the All-State Championship meet Saturday, November 21st in Westfield. Next up is the MHS girls soccer team who were the goal -ias, if you will, in the NEC all season long. And, but like I said last week, they learned quickly that their road to a state championship would not be as easy. They were, being, they were pushed to the brink in their first round against 15th seed Medford, and then they played just well enough to beat Belmont and make the semifinal. That semifinal was against 6th seed Woburn and played at Manning Field in Lynn, where the Magicians played a little bit better defensively and got the win 2 0. I had predicted a 2 1 win. Uh, I should have given the de defense more credit, but they had been a little bit shaky coming in. Olivia Eddy and Megan McCarthy scored the MHS goals to beat Woburn. But that is where our goal Ias met their David. Eighth seed Concord Car Carlisle came into the final off big wins, most recently upsetting fifth seed Danvers 5-0 in their semifinal, and before that, taking out first seeded Wilmington. So needless to say, our magicians did not intimidate them. The North final also took place at Manning Field, and the Magicians couldn't get into any type of offensive rhythm in the match. It was a 2-1 final, Marblehead on the losing end. The lone Magician goal was scored by MHS standout freshman Rory Schauder by usual fashion on a free kick just outside the box near the football five-yard line. Rory Schauder pops it up into the air and in the net, score! She does it again! Rory Schauder with the goal off the free kick. It was a great final game despite the loss, so tune in when we show it here on MHTV Saturday, November 22nd at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, November 23rd at 2.30 p.m. You may remember back on September 25th, the Marblehead football team battled NEC rival Danvers to a home overtime win 29-23, and it all came down to a Danvers fumble that led to Marblehead's winning score. The two teams met again in the Division III Northeast Final Friday night at Piper Field, where our magicians, much like the girls' soccer team, failed to get into any type of offensive rhythm. And it was in the end, the Falcons, that fed on the black and red and walked away with the trophy. It was a 13-6 loss that ended our magician season. Keo to Sears on a 23-yard pass was the score for Marblehead with a failed extra point kick. The magician season isn't over, though. They suit up again on Thanksgiving morning to take on the Swampscott Big Blue. I got to speak with Coach Rudloff and Captains Brian Graff and Reed Cressy about the Thanksgiving matchup, what it means to them to be part of such a treasured tradition in our town, and to reflect on a season where no one really thought they stood a chance. You know, probably more than any other team that I've coached, I've, this is the team I'm the most proud of. We, you know, we lost almost everyone last year. We only had, I think, three starters return. Um, nobody expected anything from us. I, I just think it's unfortunate the way it ended that I don't think that they got as much as attention as they, they should have. But, um, you know, we had uh, an extremely hard working group of kids. Um, that hard work for the first time really paid off. You know, the kids got to see the benefit of, of the work that they put in. Tons of competition at a lot of positions because we didn't have a lot of starters come back. And that, that helped us be a much better team than we've been, I think, in the past, especially on the defensive side of the ball, because of the fact that there was so much competition um, on the field. And, you know, we didn't we didn't win uh, that game against Danvers at home. Um, we're very disappointed about that. But uh, I think, you know, after a couple of days have passed now, we're able to look back and realize that, you know, maybe we came a lot farther than anyone thought we could have. Um, just still always going to be disappointed that we didn't go a little further. All right, Reed, you battled all the way to the end. Give me your thoughts on the season. I think overall it was a um, it was it was successful, but I think the third year in a row really I think we fell short of what we really wanted to do was win a Super Bowl. Um, other than that though, I'm proud of everybody on this team. We were picked to do really nothing this year. I think we made a lot of people look stupid that said that. Yeah, it was a new squad and as a captain you had to be a leader with new players coming up. So as a leader now, how are you going to get everybody refocused after a tough loss? Honestly, this is a focused group of kids. I don't think I'm going to have to do anything else differently than we have all year. Uh, these kids are determined to win this game. Um, Swamp Scott, we get up for this no matter what. Well, good luck. Thanks, Reed. Thank you. All right, Brian. 
Swampscott has had a kind of a down year, but they've come in uh, playing really well offensively, and they've won three in a row. Yeah. What are you guys expecting from them? Um, I think they always come to play every Thanksgiving game every year. Um, they had a pretty rough start, um, as many people know, this year, but I think they got their program together. They uh, got everyone straight, and um, I think they're going to come ready to play uh, next Thursday. We should just be ready for whatever they uh, throw at us. It's always a battle. It should be fun. Yeah. So what's it going to mean to you this year as a senior playing in front of a home crowd? Um, I think Thanksgiving games, no matter where it's played, it, um, everyone comes. But especially being a home game, I think it's going to be really special. And like, I'm pretty sure everyone in Marblewood is going to come. It's going to make it really special for our last hurrah. Um, it should be a good game. We've never been successful in the past when we've been that much better than Swamp Scott. It's, it's because of that reason you're coming from the playoffs, um, you know, and then all of a sudden going against a team that we're supposed to beat. And those always seem to be our closest games. Um, it is, it's a difficult task. So we, we took a couple days off after the loss on Friday. This Today's Tuesday. It's our first day back. We decided we're not even wearing pads, helmets. Um, today we're just getting the kids to run, get their legs back in shape. Um, and we're trying to get all the, the um, you know, silliness out of us today, for lack of a better term. Um, we're not looking at film yet. We're not doing any of that. We're letting the kids get everything out of their system today um, and just get our legs back a little bit. Tomorrow's going to be our first day back at practice, and that's going to be the key. We're, we've cut the practices down a half an hour, trying to just keep the focus um, to 90-minute practice and just try to really get the kids to, to work on their execution. I know that the big thing we're going to work on um, in all of the practices is making sure that we cut out all of the mistakes that we're making that have been killing ourselves and if we can do that I think we'll be pretty successful on Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving Day game is a great tradition. What's it mean to be a part of it once again as Marvel head coach and what's it mean to host this year? I love it. You know, Thanksgiving means so much. I have so many great memories as a kid, um, you know, rooting for Swampscott, um, you know, growing up in my family coming from Swampscott. But, you know, for, for I just, you know, thinking about, you know, Will Quigley, you know, Matt Evans, Maddie O'Neill, a lot of the kids that, you know, in the, in the past as I've been a coach here meant so much to the team and, and did so many great things. Things. You know, I, I have great memories of those kids in those games, um, you know, Tuna Gregory and just you know, kids that just played out of their minds on Thanksgiving Day and, and did really neat things. And that, that for me, you know, that's become part of my Thanksgiving and, and for my family too. Um, you know, I got a chance to see my son play on, on this field and, and play at Swamp Scott against Swamp Scott. Um, and now, you know, I think my youngest little guy is going to come up next year and hopefully we'll get a chance to see him. So, you know, it means everything to me. I mean, it's why I coach football. I'd rather be doing that than anything else. Such a great part of a great day. And yeah, absolutely. Good luck, Coach. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And just as Thanksgiving wouldn't be the same without Turkey, a Marblehead High School football game wouldn't be the same without the MHS Band. They're an essential part of the experience at Piper Field when we attend the games. And don't tell me that when you're at the game and there's a timeout, you haven't thought to yourself, where is that beautiful rendition of Katy Perry's fireworks coming from? And that's just our woodwinds and brass. The band works hard throughout the year to entertain at football games, pep rallies, and some town events. MHS Advanced TV students Liam Norton and RJ Hooper sat in with the band and have this advanced report. Every Friday night, you can find the MHS marching band at Piper Field. The band plays every home game for MHS football. We sat down with MHS band members and talked to them about the marching band. We sat down with band vice president Joseph McKeever and asked him about how the band gets ready for halftime. Well, usually we're given the halftime pieces around June, and that's when the upper, us upperclassmen practice them over the summer. But for freshmen, they usually get them around September. So I'd say from September to whenever the next game is, we learn the songs, we, we uh, get them performance ready, and then we add in the marching later. The basic fundamental part is the music itself. So I think that usually, it takes just a couple of weeks to get one of them done, but to get marching technique as well, that takes at least a month, whenever we have rehearsal, I'd say. We sat down with Drumline Vice President Bartia Mayer and asked him about what the band does during the football games. Um, well, during halftime, we march out onto the field and we play three songs for a halftime show, and then we play in the stands for the rest of the game to cheer on the football team. A lot of people think that marching band's relatively easy, that you can just go on there and march and that, you know, the football team's doing all the hard work, you know. Football is hard work, but marching band has been there a majority of games and 
it's, it's tough to get a, a band of 38 students out in the field marching in sync and I think that's, a, that's why it takes a lot of time for the, the band to be ready. It is very clear that the marching band puts a lot of effort into their shows and deserves proper recognition. One of the main reasons the football program at Marblehead High School has been so successful recently and in past years comes from the roots of the program and the platform for sportsmanship and competitiveness formed over the years. When our athletes finish their time on the field, as many of our seniors will this year, there is always that bond that binds these players together and opens doors to form friendships and future bonds with past athletes. The Marblehead Gridiron Club is the organization that allows the camaraderie to, to continue between pigskin brothers from the past while welcoming the newly graduated and future athletes. Not only does the organization help fund the football program, but they also give standout student athletes the opportunity to further their studies both off and on the field by offering annual scholarships. I met with Evan Harris, who tells us more about the Marblehead Magicians Gridiron Club. Uh, the Gridiron Club, it was uh, formed back in the early 80s. Uh, some of the old timers in Marblehead, Elliot Roundy, S.O. Haynes, um, Bill Peabody, Carl Siegel. It was an organization that these guys formed to help promote football in town, whether at the high school level, the youth level, um, and it's evolved from there um, into an organization that does just that, as well as uh, gives out many scholarships to our student athletes uh, every year. And I guess I that's probably what I'm the most proud of at this point right now. So besides the scholarships and helping out the youth, what does it mean to you to be part of an organization with all the guys? Uh, well, the, you know, the, the Gridiron Club has been really a, a, a passion of mine. Um, uh, I enjoyed my days of playing football and of coaching youth football all these years and uh, just being part of this organization, being the head of the organization is really quite an honor that uh, uh, our, our past leader, S.O., passed on to me and um, it's great. I mean, there's a great group of guys that uh, put a lot of time into uh, making football enjoyable for everybody in town. Well, it seems really like a special club. These guys are getting ready, gearing up for the, their Thanksgiving Day game. You remember yours? Tell me a little bit about that. Oh yeah, my year 75, it, it was kind of a rainy day and uh, we lost that game. But those memories uh, I'll bring up with uh, at the Old Timers Banquet uh, next Monday night. What's really important is the memories that these guys are going to form and have this Thanksgiving and just of their whole career here at Marblehead High School playing football and, and really what it really means to, to be part of a team, uh, the greatest team sport uh, that there is. So. Um, these are a great group of kids and uh, their memories that are being formed is what's important. What is the Gridiron Club doing to get these guys to come back, get more alumni to come back and join up? Well, th that's a pretty good question. Actually, one of the things that we do uh, sponsor between Marblehead and the Swampscott Gridiron Club is the Old Timers Banquet. And they have, that's the Monday before Thanksgiving every year where the group of guys from Swampscott and Marblehead get together up at the Gary, have a meal, and we have the coaches speak and have a guest speaker and just reminisce and, and uh, remember old times. And we're starting to get some of the younger guys that have graduated to come back and be a part of that. We, we've opened up a, a website and we have a Facebook page now too. Bill Gillis was very instrumental in, in starting it and um, it's the website is mhdgridiron.com and there you can it's it's a nice site it has a lot about our Hall of Fame members as well as a um, PDF that you can download for an application to become a member. All our dues our, do, our dues are very minimal um, but all the proceeds from uh, donations that's uh, go towards scholarships funding um, the banquets and trophies and anything the coaches might need throughout the year. Each year we check in with all of the seniors and get their thoughts on the Thanksgiving game and what it means to them to be a part of the tradition. It's always fun to pick the brain of a teenager, so let's see what they had to say. As a kid growing up in Marblehead, you go to every single Thanksgiving game and you look forward to playing that last game as a senior and it means the world to everyone who ever's played football at Marblehead. Um, I can't wait to play in it and see how it goes. As a senior, uh, I, we, I, know what it's, well, I know what it looks like to win and to lose against Swampscott Thanksgiving, and uh, trust me, it's always better. Uh, it's always better being on the winning side. I think my freshman year, yeah, we lost, and I remember saying in the stands watching that game, that would never happen to me as long as I play on that team. And 
it's it really means a lot. Even though this game technically is, is the end of our season, no matter what, this game means a lot, a whole lot to all of us. Mark Cohen, number 39, fullback, outside linebacker. The Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving Day game means a lot to me because I've been playing football for like 10 years now and been growing up with these guys for a while and been playing together for a while and I just want to get the win. It means a lot to me. I'm Jack Hertz. I play middle linebacker and guard and uh, this game really means everything to me. I mean. I've been looking forward to this game for just about my entire life. I've been playing this game for 10 years, so all I want to do is win this game, and I'll do whatever it takes. Uh, I'm Ted York. I'm the punt returner, and uh, Thanksgiving means uh, means a lot to me. It's uh, it's really cool because you grow up all your life watching the game, and uh, the whole town comes out, and it's just a really fun experience. Hi, I'm uh, Gary Keough, uh, number 13, the quarterback, and uh, Thanksgiving means a lot. You know, even though we're out of the playoffs, this is a huge game. It means a lot to our team and to the town, and, you know, we've been watching it ever since we were younger, and to uh, finally be able to play in it is, is a huge honor. Hi, I'm Jake Hamelberg, wide receiver, and for me, the Thanksgiving's a, it's a special day where the whole town gets to come together for a game, and I'm excited to be able to represent Marblehead on this special day for the town. Hi, I'm uh, Nick Wigglesworth left tackle and uh, D lineman. Uh, Thanksgiving means a lot to me. I uh, can't wait. It's going to be my last game ever playing football. So hope uh, hope we get the win. I'm Liam Coughlin. I play outside linebacker and wide receiver for Marblehead High School. And the Thanksgiving game to me is all about tradition. I mean, I've been going to the game since third grade. My brother played for uh, the high school, so I watched him when I was a kid. So it's a huge game for me. I mean, I've been watching this game for 10 years, so it means a lot. Craig Nolan, I'm play safety, and uh, it's really special. You, know, you play your entire life with these guys, and it's the last game, so uh, it means a lot. I'm uh, Buck Tompkins. I am the center, and uh, Thanksgiving means to me. I mean, I've been going to the game ever since I was a little kid. It's a great time. Everybody goes, um, and it's a great game for, for Swamp Scott. It means a lot playing in it, watching everybody else playing it before me. Jeff Stern, linebacker and running back. Um, you know, especially now that we're out of the playoffs, uh, this Thanksgiving game means everything to me. You know, playing with my brothers that I've been playing with since youth. Uh, you know, get some glory, you know, beat Swamp Scott. Uh, you know, have some fun. The 107th Marblehead Swamp Scott Thanksgiving football game will start at 10 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning at Piper Field at Marblehead High School. If you're the one cooking the Thanksgiving dinner and can't be at the game, first off, good luck. And second, mo but most important for you to remember, is that you can tune in to MHTV this year because the game will be live, thanks to our community partner, National Grand Bank. And even though game time is set for 10 a.m., throw MHTV on a little early while you're giving that bird its last rubdown, so you can catch the pregame activities, including the playing of the National Anthem by the combined Marblehead and Swamp Scott fans. And even though it's not a gifting holiday, we have a special Thanksgiving gift for those of you who are going to be away this Thanksgiving, you can still watch the game. Thanks to MHTV sports volunteer Steve Clay and Bullpen Media, the game will be streaming live on the internet. Just visit our website, marbleheadtv.org, for information on how you can watch online. And if you're still saying to yourself, there's just no way I can work the mouse with a turkey stuck on my hand, see the game later on Thanksgiving evening at 7.30 or on Saturday, November 28th at 1 p.m. My prediction for the game. 14-6 Marblehead, three touchdowns combined with one successful two-point try. We'll see how I do. I'm getting better. Just uh, don't ask me to bet on Sundays yet. <laughs> I hope everyone has a safe, healthy, and fun Thanksgiving weekend. And remember, a little thanks goes a long way. For Headliner Sports, I'm Jess Burton, and I'll see you next time with more good news. John? All right, thanks a lot, Jess. And that concludes this week's Headliner. I'm John Caswell, and on behalf of the entire news team here at MHTV, I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.